But for all of us, we're alive. There are men and women uh, standing beside us uh, who are here to be supportive. This is not a put down place. You don't get dissed at Glide. <laughs> and no dissing at Glide is always up. I want you to take the hand of the person who's sitting or standing next to you. Balcony, please. Those standing next to you. Hold on to somebody this morning, because that person, whether you need it or not, that person may need it. So you hold on to it. And Maggie is going to lead us now in prayer. Oh God, if it isn't one thing, it's another. Not that we're whining. Okay, maybe we are. But sometimes stuff just piles up on us. Stuff like overdue bills, family obligations, schoolwork. Sometimes we look around and there are people everywhere who are on our nerves. They're on the streets, they're at home, they're at the mall, they're riding the Muni. <laughs> and then on top of it all, we've got the holidays. Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, Ramadan, and just around the corner, Millennium Eve. We can't help it. Sometimes it feels like it's just too much. Like life is moving so fast that we have to run just to keep up. And so, Lord, in the midst of it all, 
Would you please remind us to just breathe? Remind us to calm down and to remember that what really matters in life is love. And what really matters inside ourselves is a clean heart and a right spirit. Lord, restore our joy this morning. Renew our faith. Reclaim our souls. Remind us in this holiday season that we need to take care of ourselves if we want to take care of anyone else. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for letting us whine once in a while. Thank you for loving us enough to listen, even when everybody else is sick of hearing it. And thank you too, Lord, for this place, a place that's safe and sane and where we can be who we are and say together, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right on. Right on. Shalom. 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 Salam. Ladies and gentlemen, the words are on the wall. We need your help. What child is this who's laid to rest on Mary's lap? Is sleeping. Who made the green with love and praise the world of rest is weeping? This, this is Christ the child who comes to tell us we are.
Thank you, Reedy. Thank you. Thank you. When you come to glide, you learn how to exhale. Turn to your neighbor. Embrace your neighbor. The person sitting next to you. time in the life of the world and the life of our congregation for you who come I look forward every week to hearing the change band and the ensemble let's hear them now as they speak to our souls
waiting for this morning. All right.
the Glide Ensemble. Thank you. Thank you. You're a blessing. I want you to know you're just a blessing. Thank you.
morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Janice Mirakitani, um, and I'm the executive director of programs here. Happy holidays, everybody. Here at Glide Church, we celebrate liberation through recovery. We believe that being liberated from addictions is recovery not just from the chemical or the substance, but also from all of those forces that oppress us, like racism and sexism and classism and ageism and homophobia and arrogance and self-pity and uh, insecurity and our, sense of own, our own sense of powerlessness. I believe that everyone is in need of recovery from something. And how I began, how I began to face the need for my own recovery was to face the truth about my oppression, my denial about my incested childhood, and my addiction to past violent relationships. Recovery made me face a lot of things. And I found out that truly, there is no hiding place. And if you want to know more about that, you can buy Cecil's book that's entitled No Hiding Place Downstairs. I'm in the book too. <laughs> so when Cecil says, I love you and accept you unconditionally, for me it truly was life changing and affirming. But it is also dangerous. Because I found out I had to give up a lot of my stuff. Like my shame and my walls of denial. And I had to begin to forgive myself. And I had to begin to heal myself. I had to stop talking so much and start walking so much. I had to take some risks. Like to open myself up to love to. Well, as Cecil says, to love. Well, at Glide, we have had, over the last 10 years, thousands of people who've come through our recovery programs and hundreds who have graduated from what we call our generations, the generations who are reborn to regain their children, their families, their jobs, their independence, their pride, and their dignity. This morning, we are celebrating once more liberation time, and it's graduation time. 32nd generation. of our recovery programs, my friend, sister, and Tommy Howe. My name is Ntombe and I'm a recovering addict and alcoholic, a proud woman on the move, a lesbian and a member of Glide Memorial Church and I'm proud. I'd like to thank Jan, Cecil, the Glide community for giving me back my life, my respect, my dignity, and helping me to have a purpose that wakes me up every morning and makes me happy to come to work. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Roland. I'm a recovering alcoholic and addict. First of all, I'd like to thank God, Cecil William and Jan, and the Glide community for all their support. The Glide recovery programs are based on 
experiences of the black community and the African concept of the extended family. The happiness of the individual depends upon the happiness of the community and the happiness of the community depends on the happiness of the individual. You are our lifeline and we are your sons and daughters. We are kind of come home. Thank you. I want to introduce I want to introduce the staff that makes all of this possible. Uh, Veronica Freeman, administrative director over here. Eric <laughs> Eric, an administrative assistant over there. Ben, Jackie Freeman, counselors. Deborah Drysdale, our clinical consultant. Yes, all right. And now we're gonna hear from Nelda, who is one of our graduates. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. My name is Nelda, and I'm a true grateful recovering addict. Yeah. I want to give thanks to God, first of all, for allowing me to come to a place like Lai. I want to thank Janice, Rakitani, and for Cecil William for the wonder things, wonderful things he's doing right now. Um, when I came to Glide, I was homeless. I was separated from my children because of my drug addiction. I didn't have nowhere to go, and um, they opened the door for me. Uh, I didn't even have a job. But through recovery, they helped me to live life in life terms learn to accept things as they come and deal with it and no matter what I don't ever have to pick up again right. and today I'm working at Glide today <laughs> um, I have a beautiful beautiful Three bedroom home right next door to so William. <laughs> Most of all, I got myself back, my pride back, my dignity back. And I want to thank God for everything. Thank you. Nelda has a three beautiful three-bedroom apartment in the Cecil Williams house, the house that you helped build. Okay? Terry Harper is going to lead us in the terms of faith and resistance, which are our guiding forces to help us stay clean and sober. <laughs> Good morning, Glide. Um, okay, okay, here, here we go. Okay. Uh, Glide's terms of faith and resistance. Terms of faith and resistance. To gain control over my life. Gain control over my life. To tell the world my story. To tell the world my story. To stop lying. To stop lying. To be honest with myself. To be honest with myself. To accept who I am. To accept who I am. To feel my real feelings. To feel my pain. To feel my pain. To forgive myself and to forgive others. To practice rebirth and new life. To live my spirituality. And to love and support all my brothers and sisters here in God. Over 10 years ago, Reverend Cecil Williams saw that there was a need for recovery. Over 10 years ago, he gave us a place to come recover. He made us a home, 
And so I'd like to bring him up right now. And you want to say something to us? I thought I'd said enough. The terms of resistance that they just recited, we felt important to bring something new to recovery. And so you will know that you look at what other terms are and our terms that we've done some reinvigorating stuff because we had to with the population that we were identifying with. So that's one thing. The other thing is our spirituality is lived every moment. If it works, if it really works, if recovery really works, our spirituality lives every moment. And finally, finally, it creates a new community. What we need to do is know that whatever we're recovering from, we need to continue to reach out to our brothers and sisters. We must enact unconditional love with our brothers and sisters. It works for us here. And I know it works for all people. I think I've said it. Executive Director of the Glide Foundation, Janice Mirakatani. Amen. Responsible for all the programs here at Glide. Thank you so very, very much. So very, very much. Congratulations to you, the graduates, the counselors, and all in Tombe. Marvelous job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, those who you've seen today uh, know that I try to come to the recovery circle as often as I can. It's a ministry. I mean, it's a min it feeds you. Feeds you. I'm there all the time. Thank you. I want to remind us, uh, before we lift the offering, there's another pledge I want to remind us of. Last Sunday, we talked to you about almost at 600 members. Uh, we got about 17 new members last Sunday. We need, if my figures are correct, about 13 to go into um, uh, uh, 600 and beyond. Now, some of you have been on the fringes. You've been skirting around the edges. It's time for you to stop playing and get on in. Uh, get your whole body wet. Amen. Go on in. Come on in. And uh, we're not going to do any harm, but we're going to do you some good. So come on in. At the end of the service, go through the door here. You will see the green door. There you will go in, and there are men and women to receive you and talk to you about uh, becoming a part of the Glide extended family and remember you don't have to live right here in San Francisco to be a member of Glide upstairs you can be anywhere around this area even out of the country Germany and Brazil Guatemala you can become a member of the Glide family don't miss this opportunity treat yourself to something that's marvelous become a member of the Glide family amen, amen. The ushers will come forward now as we begin to lift our offering. You have a blue pledge card, and we need to remind ourselves that um, Glide not only works on love, but it needs resources as well. We practice three things here at Glide. We practice respect and care for the poor. We practice diversity and unconditional love. You make everything happen here at Glide with your resources, 
We need you to help us budget for the year 2000 by signing a pledge card and committing yourself to give a certain amount of your resources toward that budget. This way we know then the kinds of programs we can have. If we need to new some, some new ones, we can know whether the resources will be there for it. We need you to undergird and support all that we're doing right here. As the ushers come among you, please, won't you make sure that Glide is included in your budget, not the bottom of your budget, but the top of your budget. Amen. Amen. Carrie. Good morning, everybody. I'm Claire Elizabeth, and I'm a 20-year-plus proud member of Glide community. I want to invite you to come and help us this holiday season. We really need your help. Food bag day, my favorite day of the year. 10,000 turkeys in bags of food. We need you. Six hours worth of putting food in bags. Come on down, sign up downstairs. Tuesday, December 21st. And also on December 23rd, we need you when we give away thousands of toys. And then after this celebration, we need you to wrap gifts, lots and lots of you. So at 12.30, go to room 206 if you have a little bit of time to help us wrap some gifts. So for any of these opportunities, sign up downstairs at the volunteer table in Freedom Hall and find out about these and other opportunities throughout the year to volunteer here at this incredible church. Also, we want to tell you that there's a joyful way to welcome the New Year in. For, um, join us at the New Year's celebration in Union Square. The theme of the evening is San Francisco 2000, celebrating hope, compassion, and diversity. We will have the Glide Ensemble, these incredible people here, the Change Band, dancing, poetry, and a lot of fun. It will be a wonderful celebration of values, hopes, and dreams that are hold us together as a community. Because there's going to be a lot of people expected, you will need a ticket. So sign up to get a ticket in Freedom Hall after this celebration. Then uh, the holiday toy drive has begun, so please bring new and unwrapped toys for us to pass on to our children. Drop the toys downstairs in the Fr Freedom Hall toy box. Also, while you're here today, visit Freedom Hall, and we have lots of goodies for you to buy, last minute Christmas shopping, whatever, Kanaka shopping, please go downstairs and check it out. We have uh, Reverend Williams' series of sermons, including Love versus Homophobia. We have Janice Miracatani's tape on uh, girlfriends. We have bricks or tiles that you can purchase that will go in the lobby of the incredible Cecil Williams house next door. We have um, tapes and CDs of the Glide Ensemble and also today's celebration. We have video and audio tapes that you can buy. We have the t-shirts and the hats, that's my crew. And uh, yes, and um, those all go to support uh, the projects that we're doing here. We have uh, other books, we have mugs, we have teddy bears. And um, all of these benefit the um, 50 Glide programs and the Community House and the Janice Mercatani Youth and Family and Child Care Center, which is down this street. We've been busy this year. So, after the celebration, please become a member, as Doug um, uh, told you about. And we have an information table downstairs in Freedom Hall that will cover all of this information. So, welcome to all of you. Happy holidays, and I love you. This is Claire instead of Carrie. Claire. Thank you, Claire. And please, don't forget New Year's Eve. You cannot get into the spot in the Union Square without a ticket. We will arrive here, gather here, and by 9.15, we wish that we will be on our way. We want to start marching toward Union Square. Uh, families are now coming. They've been calling the office. Families with children. Uh, elderly want to be a part of that and so we have made arrangements to have limited amount of seating for the elderly but we must be here go down together and arrange to have a good Millennial Eve event we it promises to be fun it promises to be an uplift and uh, the one who shall deliver the word at the at the stroke of 12 amen shall be our own Cecil Williams amen okay 
Remember, in Freedom Hall, there are tickets available. Sign up and get your tickets. Amen. Let us now hear this ensemble. Relations in our lives, but you know God is always with us, and all you need to do is open up your heart and let Him come in, because He's always good to us. Sometimes in this life, when things are rough. I've had my share of blessings But times are still tough Come what may Let it be
Alan Huggins. I talked to uh, Douglas and Jan about uh, my speaking both at the 9 and 11 today because of an incident that occurred last Sunday evening. Of which I was shocked about, upset about. I got the feeling that Jan was very upset also. And so here I am. So good to have a platform so you can voice your opinions, so you can tell your story. So you can tell what helps you and hopefully what will help others. It was an incident where uh, the two um, candidates for mayor were engaging each other. It was a great debate, by the way. And I want to tell you this, it was not only a great debate, but the place was full of folks. I'm proud because the Tenderloin showed up and said, we are interested in politics and we're interested in people debating and we want to get the truth. Uh, and then we'll make a decision about who we're going to vote for. It was full. I mean full. There were a few policemen there, but anyway, it was full. <laughs> By the way, I see Terrence Helen Ann and his wife. And is that your daughter there, Terrence? Yeah. Here this morning. Now, now see, he knows what to do. See what he did? All right, you know. <laughs> That's one thing about ministers and politicians. We know, you know, we know when it's time. We know when it's time, right? Yeah. It, was, it was just a great time together. And of course, we went with a lot of people from this area. Uh, somebody said they stacked the deck. Blyde really showed up, you know. 
But whatever the case, we were so delighted that Johnny May, for instance, who, who comes from the street, who now is recovering and doing very well, said, you know, that's the first time I voted, and I want you to know I'm so happy. My vote counts, she said. So good for some of our folks that just graduated today who went down and voted early and put their name, you know, punched in the person that they were for. It was so good. I saw them walking out with their chest out, stuck out, out of City Hall. And many times folks don't come out of City Hall with their chest out. Okay. There they were. There they were. We came down out of the debate and we were saying uh, saying some of us four more years and some folks saying something else and we got into uh, a chest pushing incident where Jan and I walked down the stairs and as we walked out we were confronted by other folks who were holding Amiano sign so you had the brown signs and the Amiano signs, and these signs were flickering and maneuvering and all that kind of stuff. And as we walked up, we were stopped. And frankly speaking, I was shocked. And then I got mad, y'all, because I thought this was my people that had stopped me they were people that I'd been working with for 36 years and I recognized a few from the gay and lesbian community and I said wait a minute this is my people right. and then we stood there then several walked in front of Jan and Jan said that she was frightened and I think she had a right to be because it would looked as though uh, several people were going to not only stand before her chest to chest but that she would be hit I couldn't understand it. I just couldn't understand it. and so I got put out and I yelled and said get out of the way and then we walked through and went about uh, trying to hold back our folks and they were trying to hold back their folks and all the holding back of folks got mixed up and I grabbed the wrong person at one point and said, get out, come on, you, you shouldn't be doing that. And it was one of their folks, right? <laughs> oh, it was something. Uh, uh, one, one aide from Amiano's staff said that uh, it was no time or place for this sort of thing to take place. And then a person from the Brown camp said it was really ugly. And it was. It was really ugly. It was not only ugly and it should not have taken place, but um, I, I think, you know, when you are friends and when you are brothers and sisters and you start pushing and shoving publicly, folks can misinterpret who you are and what you're about. And so that's why I wanted to let you know that we got a call from Tom Amiano, Jen and I did, the other night. And we talked with him on the phone. I talked with him first and Jan secondly. And he said, I don't condone this kind of stuff. I'm against it. And as far as I know, uh, these were not my people. Also, I got a letter here from his campaign from Eileen Hansen who says that uh, she identifies the people that, it, that did it and she said they're not a part of our campaign but even if they were not a part they should not have done it. It should not have taken place. And she goes on to express the fact that they have talked to the people, they've let them know that it can't go on and it will not go on. And she talks about the respect that they have for us. I've worked hard enough to get some respect. Okay. 
And I think Jen's worked hard enough for her not to be harangued and, and almost hit. Yeah. I just couldn't believe the situation. It was as though when they said that we were being confronted because we were voting for Willie Brown, I want anybody to know and everybody to know I got a right to choose whomever I want to vote for. Yeah. And you also, you got a right to vote and make a choice about the person or persons that you're going to vote for. I went there as a Brown supporter and left as a Brown supporter. No one has the right to take our freedoms away from us. And so, my brothers and my sisters, I want you to know that I'm all right with me. I'm all right with me because, see, maybe folks don't realize this, but I've been called. I've been called. I've been called to be a messenger to all the people. I've been called to be a preacher to all the folks. I've been called to stand up at the most critical circumstances. I've been called to walk through the muddy water. I've been called to stand up and say to folks, look, I believe in unconditional love and you're not gonna get me to practice anything else but unconditional love. I may not like what you're doing, but I love you just the same. I know this doesn't sound right. It's supposed to not be this way. You know, you're supposed to have something against folks. But I ain't got nothing against nobody at any given point, you see. And I know I'm supposed to hold some grudge somewhere, somehow, with somebody. But when you are called... You ain't got time for no grudges or no hate, no matter who you are. And so, like Isaiah, the sixth chapter, if you want to read something good, read Isaiah, the sixth chapter. In the year that I, Lord, died, you know, something happened. The king died. And when the king died, when you stopped worshiping the king and you began to worship God, something happens to you and that's what happened to me see I, I you know I, I remember the Moses story and how difficult it was for Moses to be called and how he kept saying I'm not ready I'm not ready all of us go through that I'm not ready I'm not give me a little longer so I can keep cutting up give me a little longer so I can have my way give me a little longer so I can keep on getting what I'm getting because it's so good, Lord. <laughs> Just a little longer. <laughs> and now I want to tell you that sometimes, somewhere, something confronts you and you have to face the reality that you got to make a choice now. You got to decide where you are with your life. And so I've made a decision where I am with my life. And where I am with my life is I'm standing with, Is uh, uh, with Isaiah, with, I with the book of, who am I talking about? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that was Isaiah, y'all. And so like Isaiah, I cried out, Woe is me! For I'm lost, and I'm a man of unclean lips. Now how could a man of unclean lips and as sinful as me speak the message of God? But when you've been touched with a seraphim who brings the tongue of fire 
and flies in your hemisphere and lands on your altar and puts then the tongue of fire to your tongue. All you can say is, here am I, send me. I'll take it. I don't care. I'm, I'm not going to let nobody put me down and take me away from others. I want you to know that the power of God has touched my life, my spirit. Long time ago, back in San Angelo, Texas, when I was a child, I began to say, I'm going to be a preacher. And my tongue was being touched then. And I knew then that there was something different about me. And I was going to make that difference count. And I came to you because I wanted to make sure that those who were on the fringes of society, those who had been rejected, those who had been put down, those who had been talked about, those who had no place to go, those who were lonely, those who were hurting, those who were finding themselves unable, I just made sure that some way the power of God took my life and here I am with you this morning. And when the prophet reads, your sin is forgiven, I said to myself, if I can be forgiven, then I can forgive. I can forgive. You know, ain't nothing in the world too much for me to forgive. You know, and then I don't have myself together with my unconditional love and my love for all people. If I can't forgive, Got to be able to forgive now. And I know a lot of you don't believe what I'm saying. But I'm telling you now, you better learn how to forgive so you can move on with your life also. I know a lot of you don't believe in forgiveness. You know, it's, it's, too, it's too much to forgive. And, and I better not wait. Just say, Lord, don't, don't make me a forgiving person now. Wait, Lord. Wait, please. Because if I start forgiving, then I'm going to start acting differently about myself and about my brothers and sisters. Listen, I faced it all. I faced it all. I've been to jail for racism been to jail for homophobia people who would just deny you know I'm gonna tell you something do you know that there are churches trying to imitate us but you know what they'll never get it because you can't imitate Jan called it stimulate glide stimulates you see what she's saying and what we're talking about here is we inspire people. The spirit is here. And it comes. I was sitting there took, looking at some people at 9 o'clock. And they came in. And they were as stiff as those walls there, you know. And they were standing, you know, and they'd stand there. And they'd look up. And then they'd look down. And they'd look up. And finally, their head began to. <laughs> and I said, they're being stimulated. <laughs> Yeah, the spirit's getting to them. Yeah, they came in here with all of that stuff on. You know, the finest of fines on. And they were flowing and draped. <laughs> and they had heels on like about like that, you know. And they weren't ready to move at all. They just wanted to act like they were moving. But then when, Car when Carolyn sang that song, all of a sudden they began to cry, you know? And they needed like a lot of Kleenex tissues, you know? <laughs> when the spirit hits you, you may have to use a whole box of Kleenex. You hear me?
See, I have been called to come here and be with you, to start what we started, and to be with Janice and Douglas. I've been called. So I ain't giving up on none of that stuff. I'm going to forgive and I'm going to go on with my life. I hear the call. I can hear it now, like in chapter 6. When the call came, my tongue became a, a fire of words and love and concern. I said, here am I, Lord. I'll take it. I'll go. Send me. Send me to San Francisco. Please. I got something to do when I get over there. And I don't know who I'm going to come up on or what I'm going to come up on or when I'm going to come up on it. But I'm ready. And I came here. And I have been talked about. I've been abused. I've been put down. I've been pushed aside. I've been called everything you can think of and some you can't. But I want you to know, I am not giving up because I want you to know I will never let anything separate me from God and from God's people. Who shall separate us? says the New Testament word and message. Who will separate us from the love of Jesus? Shall tribulation? No. Shall distress? No. Shall persecution? No. Shall famine? No. Shall nakedness? No. Shall peril a sword? No. Now you know what? I did not, I did not tell them what to do. But thank you, thank you, thank you. You got my back, thank you, thank you. Yeah. For I am sure then, says the writer of the New Testament, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers more, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of God's creation will be able to separate me from God and the love of Jesus our Lord. I, I, I can't leave this out. I just got to get it in. It's James Weldon Johnson stuff. See, what, what you got to realize is that those of us who came up in the black community came up with something that said to us, Preach your way. Speak your way. Write your poetry your way. Dance your way. Play your music your way. Play the blues and jazz and gospel your way. And don't lose it. So James Weldon Johnson helps us to look at our way. Our way. He does it in a prayer. He says, And now, O oh Lord, this man of God who breaks the bread of life this morning, shadow him in the hollow of your hand and keep him out of the gunshot of the devil. <laughs> keep him out of the gunshot of the devil. Yes. Take him, Lord. Take him now this morning and wash him with hyssop inside and out. I don't know what hyssop is, but it's hyssop. That's all I can say. <laughs> Hang him up and drain him dry of sin. Hang him up. Isn't that something? Hang him up. Then, well, anyway, I want to make that comment. Pin his ear in the wisdom of the post. Beating on the iron heart of sin. Lord God this morning put his eye to the telescope of eternity. Yes. 
So you got to be around a little while to understand this stuff. But anyway. And let him look upon the paper walls of time. Lord, is this, listen to this. Turpentine his imagination. Y'all know what turpentine is? Now most of you don't. It's an ingredient. <laughs> See, they know what I'm talking about. See, it's an ingredient that goes in paint to thin it out. You know? So give me some turpentine and make my imagination expand. Lord, my imagination's already gone. <laughs> Feel him full of the dynamite of, thy, of your power. Anoint him all over with the oil of salvation and set his tongue with fire. And so I come to you this morning with a tongue of fire. I come to you, I'm not afraid. I guess I'm going to be shocked about a lot of things. I have been. But I want you to know that none of us can afford to do each other in. None of us should put ourselves into a situation where we find ourselves fighting each other or going against each other. If God be with us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? And so, O oh Lord, we listen to your word when you say, I command you to love with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And so we must go about then loving. You hear, can I say that again? We must go about loving. See, ain't nobody better than nobody else. And don't be going around talking about how good you are. You ain't that good. Lord be with you. Amen. 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 